In part one of this epic solo overnight camping and spearfishing mission, we head off to a remote part of New Zealand. I find an awesome beach to camp up on, shoot a fish for dinner, spend the evening on a beautiful private beach all by myself and go out at night to brave the darkness, hunting crayfish, finding awesome nightlife such as sleeping snapper, porcupine fish, big stingrays, you name it. Check out the link above if you missed it, otherwise stay tuned for part two of this epic adventure. Ooh, looks a bit chilly this morning. Anyways, had a good sleep. It's a stunning morning. Beautiful. Beautiful. Get some uh get some water, heat it up with a jet ball, and uh have a nice coffee. Try and warm up and uh yeah, might cook up one of those crayfish from last night, get some food in the stomach. And then yeah, get that cold wet wetsuit on, get back into it. Amazing morning. It's going to be a beautiful day. Boat's just been sitting here overnight, fine. Whoa. Marooned on these rocks. Alright. Let's get the smallest one out, there'll be plenty for a feed. Right. Just going to... Get the tail out. Beauty. Actually, keep that. I'll cook that up later with the other crays. Maybe tomorrow when I'm home. We're just going to go down the middle. Classic split in half. Then just a couple of sideways, so we're just going to really open this up so it can cook quite fast, like so. And then we can get all the butter and salt all through there, and that should cook up fairly quickly. Right. She'll be right, it's just a bit of fish from last night. Alright, some butter in there. So usually when I'm doing craze I always cook them backside down to start with. So what we'll do though is we'll pour some of this mountain butter on top. There we go. Get the cray back in there. Once it's almost, you can see the white coming through quite well, then you just flip it over a couple of minutes and that'll be done. Beautiful. Oh yeah. Come along good. Flip the cray and that is looking beautiful. Can't wait to eat this. Right, while that cray is just finishing up, We'll get the coffee ready. You may have seen this in another video. These are awesome little things. Wakako Nano Espresso. Um, I'll show you how it works. Got my Riley coffee. Good to go. Screw that one off. Fill your basket with coffee. Put that back in here. Lid on. 
And that cray looks beautiful. That looks ready to me. Oh yeah. I'll give it a taste test. Ooh. Fresh cray. Oh wow. Oh, got another wrap from last night, so cray, the cheese, a bit more cray. That is beautiful. There we go. Breakfast wrap. Yum. So um, I get a lot of questions about what gear I'm using and stuff all the time. Um, I've had a few questions lately, especially after my hunting videos, what I use for kind of safety, GPS and whatnot. So this is my handheld Garmin GPS Map 66i. It's kind of their latest best all-rounder. It's really cool. It's built in with SOS, um, the in-reach features. So that's really handy for me if I'm going out for a, a night like this diving or hunting for a night. I've told people where I'm going. I decide to stay another night. I can send a text message anywhere through satellite without any reception, send them a text, send them an email, whatever, and um, let them know I'm staying an extra night it means they're not getting worried, launching rescue parties and whatnot. And if I do get into real serious trouble, I can SOS and it's gonna get linked to all the um, emergency departments and whatnot, and then they'll come and, come and find my beacon. So yeah, it's got all the map features, um, just endless kind of stuff, so, really good all-in-one um, I like that and so that pairs with my new watch this is the Garmin Descent G1 Solar all the features um, it's kind of like one of the latest sports watches it's got everything on there um, and as a bonus it actually charges up in the in the Sun hence the, hence the name solar um, it won't get like a full charge out of it but you'll you'll get a few bars and it'll hold that charge throughout the throughout your trip so it's very cool um, it's got tides on there you name it, it's a really cool little all-round watch. I've used the other Descent series and they're massive, you know, they're like big dinner plates on your arm. This is actually a more practical watch. Um, I love it, so yeah, and it's nice and light. Right guys, that's boiling. Get the cup, just fill it up to the line. Oh, there we go. Screw that back on. Flip this over. It starts to pump out a Beautiful espresso, good creamer. Seriously, make a good, a good drop. I rate these. Hard to see in my little camping cup, but beautiful creamer on top. Oh yeah, to make a another one before I head out. <laughs> I won't make you sit through that though. Charge us up. Pack up the tent. And we're gonna get out there because it looks beautiful. Sweet, we're out of here. Can you get back in the water? See what's around. Whoa, slippery ears. <sighs> Cheers, beach. Cheers for the stay. Let's get out of here. Right. Oh, 
thought that was a pretty sweet little night on the beach. Got some craze. Feed a fish last night. Pretty good. I'm gonna cruise up the coast a bit more. Um, the sun should be hitting that coastline. I'll use that to my advantage and I'll um, do some snooping for some snapper, sneak along with that sun behind my back, see if we can pick up a snapper. Alright, let's do it. I, um, I was going to go around the corner, but I've just found this nice little bay here. Clean, clean water. I'm just going to swim out to the point here and round, and then I'll come back. Seriously, I don't know why more people don't dive in winter. It's, um, I mean, look at these conditions. You can, you just get these really calm, calm days. It can get really settled. Um, generally, cleaner viz. When that temperature rises in summer, you get all the algae blooms and stuff. So you can get some very clear water generally. Crayfish start to come up into the shallows to molt and stuff. Um, and if you love hunting snap, it's a good time to practice. There's less people out in the water. There's no one out today, and it's an amazing day, which is amazing. Um, yeah, I just highly recommend it. Just get a nice thick wetsuit, good quality wetsuit, and you'll be sweet as. It's warm. I'm warm as in this, and the water's pretty chilly. As seen from above, I'm greeted with clean water, good viz. I dive down on my first drop to be greeted by this big puffer fish. I wonder if it's the same one as last night I saw. I'm working here along the coast, finding nice ledge drop-offs like this, big gutters, and just slowly peeking over looking for snapper. There's a big sleeping snapper right here. He just sees me as I extend my gun. He just gets a bit out of range. I take a long shot and it shoots low. Bugger, that was a nice snapper. I notice a crayfish exoskeleton laying on the seabed below. So I dive down to investigate the area further. I'm looking around. It usually means there's some crayfish nearby. I have a look in these cracks, have a good look around, but perhaps they're deeper in the caves, out of the daylight. I notice a few pawa here in this crack. Some nice looking pawa, but not anywhere near legal. So move on. I'm cruising along, checking any little ledge, whether it's a couple of meters like this one, or large drop-offs. You never know where a big snapper can be parked up. Well, I couldn't resist and just jumped in on this first bit of coastline here. Um, I should have stuck to the plan and went further on and used that sun on my back. Spooked a huge snapper, probably around 20 pounds at the start. And then I've spooked another snapper. It was clearly the biggest snapper I've seen in my life. Haven't called this before, but I'm gonna say it was a 30 pound snap. It was, it was enormous. Um, yeah, just saw me before I saw it and boom, 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 gone. Um, so I'm gonna tuck back in where I was, set a fish burly, because it's pretty hard going in winter unless you get them on the snoop. Let that sit for a good hour. I'm gonna cruise up to the next point and work my way back towards this and um, this area. See if I can pick up a couple of snapper. Anyways, very fishy area, plenty of craze around, but I've got my spot from uh, last night, which I'll go grab a couple more later on, so I'm not worried about that. Heaps to pick from there and let these spots kind of mature. Yeah, exciting. Look at this coastline though. It's just stunning. Beautiful. Absolutely. Beautiful morning out in the water. 
I'm back at it, creeping along ledges, faces, looking for a sleeping snapper. It's starting to get fairly fishy in this little area, heaps of blue mau mau, sweep and sorts. Good signs, if there's fish there's generally more fish. I decide to take one of these big fat silver drummers, plenty of them around and they make an excellent burly for snapper. the fish up here, opening it right up with the burly knife, makes it easier for the snapper to come in and start feeding, rip it all up, anchor it in the rocks, it's a good technique to put a, a boulder on or a like, get it anchored so those big snapper can't run away with the fish which has happened many times. I've heard of people using cable ties to tie it to kelp and whatnot, that's not very, uh, not a very good idea. Let's not leave plastic in the ocean, eh? There were big schools of silver drummer and paroa everywhere. Quite annoying. Generally when I see these fish, I don't see much snapper. They seem to scare them away. Nice big school of blue mau mau here. Beautiful fish, as usual. Just weren't quite big enough for me to take. They're quite small. Diving down here, looking for crayfish. Nice big bouldery terrain. Then I find this awesome swim through. I love these experiences, such a cool feeling. Diving through big boulders. Helps when the water's nice and clean as well. Awesome. Making my way back along the coast back on my fish burly ground bait. It's very surgy conditions now. I managed to peek over and I'm surprised there's a lot of snapper on the fish. Unfortunately nothing too big so I let it sit for another 10 or 20 minutes, make my retreat and decide to come back later. Uh, well, I think you should have seen that on the camera. There's a whole lot of snapper on there, about 15, 20 snapper. Mostly small, all good, all good eaters. Um, would have been legal size, but and one kind of 8, 10 pounder. So that's been sitting there for about 40, 50 minutes now. So I was going to leave it for another 20 um, and head back. And hopefully um, by that stage, something bigger has come on there. Usually does take a while for the big boys to come in. Um, they grow that big for a reason they're not stupid so anyways we'll go for a bit more of an explore plenty of beautiful coastline just to muck around in see if I can find any other cray nests and uh, yeah head back there soon and have a look about 20 minutes later I'm back on my burly spot trying to hold on tight secure myself with the seaweed and kelp stalks very surgy still, peeking over, there's a nice good eater snapper there, nothing much else is happening so I decided to take this fish, stand out, put a shaft through it, that's going to be a beautiful eating fish. That's pretty hard going this morning. 
spooked the two really big snapper at the start. Um, and then just heaps of really small ones around. Manage this. Oh, we managed a nice little snapper there off the belly. And a uh, beautiful pigfish. So we've got a couple of fish on the board, that's all good. Just uh, quite surgy and swelly in here. That mixed with uh, new territory which I've never dove before, it's quite tricky, I've spooked a, f a few fish, eh? But it's, um, that's all part of it, it's fun. So yeah, I'll cruise up the coast, down the coast, we'll see. Plenty of days to go, might have a bit of a snack and then yeah, get back in there, eh? See what else we can find. Well, move spots once again. Nothing much going on around there and very swelly. Yep, getting into these winter months can be quite hard to get a good feed, but um, hey, we've got a couple of fish and we've got craze, so can't complain. Just anchored up here. Looks like there's some nice rock falls and, and whatnot terrain that should continue down underwater. And um, let's see if we can find some more snapper. With everything going very quiet, I decided to head back, head to the crayfish area I'd been the night before on the night dive and see if I could pick up a few more crays. Thinking it would be very easy, turns out it was completely different from night till day. Should have known, crayfish being a nocturnal creature, but the amount I had seen the night before compared to now in the daytime was just extraordinary. I could see some good crayfish hiding deep down in the holes, big bucks. I spot some feelers just poking out behind this little hole under this boulder. Put my arm in, have a nice little wrestle and manage to pull a nice cray out. Beautiful. With that crayfish on ice in the bag, I'm back down into this bouldery, cavey network. It's awesome territory, but also quite challenging. Crayfish have lots of big holes and cracks to back up into, so you really have to get in there hard and fast, or get lucky if they're pinned in a little corner. I'm 
just marking spots where I've seen a few nice crays. I don't want to rush in and scare them all off, just kind of assessing the scene, which is a good way to approach crayfish. Resurface, have a good breathe up, and dive back down. I take a grab at this crayfish, it looks like a good size, but unfortunately miss. He backs up deep into this crack. Still a few around, mostly small though. Big moray eel in here. Looking, looking. Spot one more cray, but I'm running out of breath. Go back to the surface, have a good breather, and I'm going to go down and approach him. Here I come. I know there's an opening on the other side of this cave, so I'm just cruising in, taking my time. There's a big cray down in there, I can't get to him though. Here's the crayfish I've marked. Coming slowly, slowly, and then hard and fast. I'm in a good tussle here. He's backed right up deep into this boulder. I've got hold of his horns, so it's just a matter of pushing and pulling, push, pull, and eventually you'll dislodge him from the rock. Got him. Out the other side of the cave. Back up. Stoked. Nice. Good foot. Woo. Still good numbers of crayfish around. Big boys down in the holes. Plenty of small ones like these in the entrances. Anyway, so I had enough crayfish for a feed. Cool to see such numbers though. Time to move on, I'd had enough. Heading back to base, I'd had enough of the day, then I see this amazing piece of coastline and I just can't resist, so I decide to jump in for one last, one last dive. Again swarmed by big schools of silver drummer, but at least it's fishy, looks quite, quite, it looks quite promising. There's some cool cave networks around. I have a swim through these. Not very fishy, as usual. There's a couple of smaller snapper around, but nothing really that I want to shoot. Seem to be plenty of swim throughs in this area along this coast. Find another cool little one here and try and make an approach on some snapper on the other side. They were pretty wary, pretty cunning and didn't get close enough. I muck around for a bit chasing these small snapper and then decide to just call it for the day. Enough is enough. I'm swimming back to the boat and then a snapper just appears out of nowhere over a ledge. Sees me as I see it. I extend the gun and manage to get a shot as it was swimming off. Right through the spine and the fish just dropped down into these boulders exactly where I hit it. It's a nice snapper too, I'm stoked. That was a surprise snapper. So took a shot as he started to run. Managed to just get him right down through the spine and spine him. Awesome. It's starting to feel very fishy just as I'm nearing the boat, so I don't muck around. Reload the gun. These rays swimming about. All sorts of stuff happening. It's actually getting pretty exciting now. I 
I dive down on this ledge here with a big gutter running parallel to the coast. It is very fishy, a lot going on and looks very promising for a snapper. Dive down, I'm just sitting here on the edge and I do see some glistening snapper towels out in the distance. After playing cat and mouse for a few minutes with the snapper, I'm getting sick of it. I decide to dive down one last time and just shoot the biggest one I see. On this drop, I notice there's a very nice snapper out in the distance. So I put my head right down into the kelp. I'm just trying to keep hidden as much as I can. And I can't believe it, the fish is swimming right up to me. I peek through the kelp here. I must have the sun on my back. It comes broadside and boom. I get a nice shaft into the snapper. A big old bruiser, look at all the scars over his head. Awesome fish. I get a beautiful shot on the fish right through the head. Close range, the shaft goes right through. The fish still has plenty of energy. He's kicking about, makes a few good runs, but it doesn't take long and he tires. Pull the fish up and he's a brute, a beautiful snapper. Very, very nice fish. Dark, dark, kelpy colours. Scars all over his head. Very cool fish. I'm just appreciating this fish I've speared, analysing him, and then I see a blue moki below. Only the second one I've ever seen in my life. The first one I spooked, so I don't muck around. I quickly reload the spear gun. <laughs> it's one fish I've been wanting to tick off for about five years. Managed to quickly reload, dive straight down. I'm trying to be slow here, not to make any sudden movements. The fish runs a circle, slowly comes back. He sees me and starts to take off quickly take the shot, spine the fish, it's a good shot, right through the spine, the fish is dead, and I am stoked. Finally, my first blue moki. First blue moki. Happy days. Well, that was. That was supposed to just be a <laughs> swim back to the boat. I'd called it, getting cold, had enough, nothing much happening. Um, and then everything just started kicking into life. Must be something to do with the tides. I haven't looked at the tides this whole whole trip. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting once I get back and see what the tides are, because it just, just kicked into life. And um, snapper were milling around everywhere. Shot this first one. That one there just sitting in the gutter, got a running shot on it, just through the spine there. Spined it. Look at this nice snapper here. Oh. Yeah man, beautiful fish. That just, that and his mate were just, they were just milling around out, out from this ledge and um, acting a bit silly. They were coming and going and we're playing cat and mouse for a few dives and then on the last dive I just dove down, had my head tucked right into the kelp bed there. I'm gonna see this fish just slowly coming in, coming in. I'm just trying to hide my eyes and this fish just cruise right up about two meters away, turned broadside and I just went whack. Now that one, which was awesome, yeah. And then, <laughs> I'm just trying to deal with this fish and um, this blue moki appears down down the bottom. It's been on my um, hit list for the whole time I've been spearfishing in New Zealand. I've never shot a blue moki 
Nice blue mochi. I've eaten them before and they're beautiful. I know you divers down south are probably rolling your eyes at me. You guys see them every dive it seems, but um, that's, uh, that's quite a uh, treat up here, so I'm stoked. That's plenty of fish. We've got a couple of snapper, blue mochi and craze. So that'll keep me in the household going for a few weeks. So yeah, let's get out of here. Let's get warm, get on the road. Stoked, what a dive. All right, guys, we're back on the beach. What an adventure. Boat's hooked up to the chimney. All stowed away. Beautiful afternoon. <laughs> hope you liked that adventure anyways. Um, hope you got something out of it. Maybe learn a few tips or tricks. Feel free to write a comment below if you've got any tips and tricks for me. But yeah, some good fish for a few weeks. Craze. It's all on ice, so yeah. Time to get home and have another cook up. No doubt it's seafood to dinner. Anyways, if you liked that episode, guys, feel free to give me a thumbs up. Um, subscribe if you want to see more spearing action, hunting, camping. Hey, and if you're new to my channel, Primal Pursuit, the hat and tee I'm wearing. They do have some designs on the back. Check out the website. Uh, I'll leave it in the description below. Primalpursuit.co.nz If you want to support my channel, that's probably the best way. And you're going to get some uh, gears to take home, so... Feel free to check that out and we will see you on another Primal Pursuit mission soon. Stay safe. Cheers for watching.